open up. You're like a minute, let people like okay. come in. There's not gonna be heaps of people because no one cares about this. Okay. And then just press play <laughs> and make sure the volume is the volume up. Yeah. Well, it's at that level. Is that fine? Yeah, or do you want all the way up? That's good. Cool. And then I'll send you a message. You can probably just come out. Okay. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay, so, uh, so oil and gas is certainly an interesting market to be in at the moment. Prices are looking good. Uh, people are out there exploring and finding and producing. Uh, so without too much further ado, I would like to introduce to you tonight's first speaker, uh, who is Damon Neves, uh, the, the Managing Director of Finder Energy, uh, who, uh, who was listed on the ASX by JP Equity last month. Uh, Damon has over 18 years experience in leadership roles as an oil and gas executive in both private and ASX listed companies. He has extensive experience in international oil and gas projects in the Asia, Asia, Asia Pacific region and Europe and also Africa. Damon's experience spans the full cycle of the oil and gas business from new ventures, exploration, development and also production. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Damon Neves. Matt, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here as part of uh, tonight's lineup. So, Finder, as I uh, mentioned, uh, we've only been listed for a month or so, uh, but as a private company, we've been around for some 17 years. And in that time, we built a diversified portfolio across two of the world's premier hydrocarbon regions. Uh, offshore here in the Northwest Shelf of WA uh, and the UK uh, North Sea. In terms of our track record, um, we've had uh, four discoveries from the seven wells we've drilled in the Northwest Shelf. So something like a 60% strike rate on exploration wells. But what's, what's been unique about Finder has been our ability to do deals with industry and through those deals, uh, money back in the bank, return value to our shareholders and get carries through work programs, including our drilling activity. And in fact, we've been so successful at that, that even as an explorer, we've been cash flow positive. So find us uh, a unique model. It's a, it's a proven model and a sustainable exploration model that's been developed over many years. 
And today we find ourselves with perhaps the strongest portfolio we've ever had uh, across two very stable, uh, very mature hydrocarbon regions. Um, and we've been waiting a long time for conditions in the sector to be so strong with oil uh, back again over $100 a barrel and uh, producers uh, breaking records and we'll see once again uh, record smash this quarter. Uh, but these are the groups uh, that are counterparties to our farm out deals. And so when oil price is high and the industry is cashed up, uh, that's when our strategy can really generate value. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about a big uh, a catalyst that, that's unfolding right now. Uh, we're drilling our Kanga One well in the northern Carnarvon Basin. Uh, it's targeting a big oil prospect. It's 170 million barrels gross. Uh, and the rig's arrived at location today. It's putting out its tankers and we spud the well and start turning the bit tomorrow. So we're going, just going to briefly touch on this slide, but I did include it in the plaque because it does show finders history. It, it tells a bit of a story. It shows the kinds of counterparties we deal with on our farm out transactions. Uh, as you can see there, uh, super majors, their large independents, all multi-billion dollar groups that have the balance sheets to take uh, drilling and exploration risk. So Finder's uh, farm out strategy is all about shifting risk. It's making sure the company's not exposed on drilling results, but that our shareholders have leverage to any success. Uh, you can also see there on this slide the wells we've drilled and the discoveries we've made over the years, even, even up and down through the cycles, uh, we've maintained an, an active portfolio. And it's because even though we're a junior, uh, we typically run at uh, 10 or so projects at any, any given time. So it's a, a pipeline of activity and, and throughput of news flow and, and catalysts. Um, so just a, a snapshot of our Northwest Shelf position. Uh, it's always hard uh, to comprehend the scale of the Northwest Shelf. This map shows thousands of kilometres of coastline. And uh, in fact, before Finder listed uh, a month or so ago, we were the largest private company acreage holder in the Northwest Shelf. Uh, so you can see our acreage is largely centred around uh, the northern Carnarvon basins, the very oily part of the northwest shelf, and the, the, the Vulcan uh, sub basin, another oily part. So we're we're focused on looking at big oil targets. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the groups we deal with to move the needle for them. They need to be drilling hundred million barrel targets, uh, and that's what our our approach is all about: is generating prospects for those groups to drill. Um, so this is what I came to talk about. Um, this, uh, this rig is the Ocean Apex. It's a semi-sub. Uh, it's arrived on location at Kanga Well. You can see from the map there, uh, Kanga lies just west of the Mutiny or Exeter oil field, a field that produced something like 100 million barrels. It was a prolific uh, rate. And, and Kanga's in the same sort of reservoir seal pairing, same play. Um, the, the risk around Kanga is really if that structure is charged uh, and ERCE, our independent experts who, who did out the work for our prospectus, gave it a 36% chance of success. Um, the thing about Kanga, though, is it's big. You can see the, the mid case or best case there, labelled 2U in that, in that chart, is 170 million barrels. Uh, we're net 15% or or over 25 million barrels in that mid case. So if you think about, if you think about uh, Kanga's success in terms of uh, perhaps what uh, Dorado was like for, for Carnarvon, who's, who's going to speak after me. I mean, this was a, a real company making event for them as the junior partner in that discovery. And I think the phase one development of the, uh, the Dorado liquids is about 170 million barrels also. So this is a Dorado-like event, obviously Carnarvon with a market cap of several hundred million dollars. Um, you know, finders starting out with a market cap of around $30 million. So we would expect a big re-rating off the back of an event like this, a success and a mid-case outcome. So it's a great 
It's a great way to start and, and to just demonstrate how our farm out strategy works is you know, this is a US $35 million well that's largely funded by our partner, Secure IV. Um, we have a, a finder has a fixed cap exposure in that well of less than a million dollars. So the thing is here, we've got an asymmetrical risk reward situation where the company's got not got a lot at stake in financial terms, but our shareholders have massive leverage if we're successful. Now Keg is one well and it, you know, it will be success or a failure. It'll, it'll be a binary outcome. So beyond Kanga, we've got 10 other projects, all covered with 3D data across the UK and Australia. Um, and we're gonna take all these projects to market, look for partners and put more wells on the agenda until we, we, we do get the, one of these discoveries and, and build a genuine EMP company off the back of that. And on that note, um, you know, this is the, this is the Dorado play shown on this map. Uh, the orange outline is, is where we define that Dorado play. Um, you can see uh, the Dorado field there. Um, you know, biggest discovery in the Northwest Shelf in 30 years. It will be the biggest oil field under development in Australia soon enough. And I'm sure you're going to hear from Thompson about Dorado, but just a, uh, an absolutely cracking field. Um, our block's shown there in the white. And we've mapped a string of prospects, all you know, over 100 million barrel targets in this play. The play just keeps getting better. We've had something like uh, nine out of 10 wells in the play encountering hydrocarbons. Uh, Parvo was another incredible result, um, booking another 40 million barrels, potentially, potentially 90 million barrels in that play. It tells us that oil in this play is prolific. Uh, the migration is, 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 is traveling a long way um, and it's all adding value. All this money that um, Santos is spending de-risking this play is adding value to our block. So we think our block there, 547, is some of the hottest property in oil and gas terms in Australia right now. We're the only company with 100% equity and acreage in this play. Um, and this is one of the blocks we're engaged with industry um, with a view to farming out and getting these targets drilled. Uh, but I do want to mention our, our North Sea portfolio. This is something we've put together over the last couple of years. Um, like Australia, we're right in the heart of the oil production in the North Sea off Aberdeen. This is the, the central North Sea. Um, our block shown there in the white. Um, we're around giant oil fields like the 40s field, the biggest field in the UK, over 2 billion barrels, and Buzzard, uh, another billion barrel field. Uh, we're mapping up uh, analogues in that same play. Uh, we picked up this acreage in the downturn. Uh, we're seeing uh, an extraordinary uh, recovery in the industry in terms of investment activity uh, and finders well placed now. Um, take all these blocks to the farm out market, partner up and, and get wells drilled here. So we've got just in closing, I just want to touch on our capital structure. Uh, one thing that's important to us that if shareholders come on the journey with us, take exploration risk. We want them to be rewarded when we're successful. So we've listed with 150 million odd shares, um, a market cap of around 30 million, an EV of, uh, of around 25 million. And we think even if Kanga's a dry hole, we think that EV is substantiated by the balance in the portfolio. Um, you know, this was uh, an IPO. Um, there, where there was no seed rounds, there was no discounted or cheap stock. Everyone, including myself, got in at 20 cents. And I know many of you there out there tonight are shareholders. And I, I thank you for your support. Um, look forward to reporting the results of Kanga as we drill ahead tomorrow uh, in the weeks to come. And we should have uh, well results there on whether there's been a discovery by, uh, by early to, to mid June. Thank you very much. Well done. Thanks, David. Uh, I heard those dreaded words that nobody wants to hear, dry hole, right? <laughs> I'm quite sure that won't be the case. Uh, we find it all with any of our, but the well head and uh, has a chat to the exploration manager who scratches his head and says nonchalantly to the managing director, the hydrocarbons appear to have migrated. <laughs> 
won't be the case with anybody else speaking tonight. I can assure you. Um, I, I know that uh, uh, Dave and Jason and Nick uh, are fresh from a road show in the East Coast last week, so uh, I suspect uh, Damon being on a road show with Nick and Jason, you probably need a week to dry out, and uh, you probably didn't want to be here tonight. But in any case, great presentation. Okay, uh, let's move on. I'd like to introduce to you all uh, our second speaker, Thompson Norday. Uh, who is the CFO of Carnarvon Energy, ASX code at CVN. Uh, Thompson has approximately 15 years of commercial and financial experience. He is a chartered accountant with experience in auditing, financial reporting, raising capital and commercial transactions, including the divestment of Carnarvon's Thailand production assets and the Buffalo farm out. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Thompson Norday from Carnarvon Energy. Good evening, everyone. Um, so just quickly, I mean, Damien touched on, on what Carnarvon's based on, but we're a Northwest Shelf focused oil and gas company. We have a market cap of around $400 million and having just completed a capital raise of, of $70 million, um, our, our total cash is, is around the $120 million mark. So we're relatively cashed up, um, ready to undertake the sanctioning of our Dorado project um, later this year. Um, you know, that, that Dorado we discovered back in 2019, a partner was Bodden at the time, who, who is now Santos, an absolute staggering discovery. And I'll, I'll talk you through the impact of, of some of that um, later. I call it absolutely staggering because Fred Weir, the uh, former head of exploration of, of, of Quadrant, was here. And I think that's what he called the discovery at the time in the press. <laughs> Um, pretty short presentation today, so I'll focus around the Better and, and Dorado. Um, Carnarvon does have a series of other exploration <laughs> prospects in the Northwest Shelf, and we are also um, undertaking a renewable diesel opportunity in, in Narragin, where we're in the, in, in the process of front end engineering and design right now. Um, I thought I'd start on the thematic of world energy supply. What, what's happening in, in the oil market right now? I'm, I'm sure all of you have been at the petrol station, seeing the oil, seeing the price of um, a litre of petrol, you know, around the two dollar market. If it wasn't for the government excise, you'd be paying well north of excise reduction. You'd be paying well north of two dollars fifty per litre, and it's simply because. As a globe, we've been underinvesting in oil and gas and oil particularly for almost five years, but we've been six years now. So what has happened then is we're in a serious deficit of production and demand now that it's recovered post COVID world, we simply cannot satisfy demand. This has now been accelerated by the fact that Russia is sanctioned. The European Union last night announced that they will not be taking Russian crude from next year. That hasn't even been accounted for in this chart. And China is only going to wake up from their, their COVID restrictions, adding extra pressure to what's happening in, in the oil price. So here you can see Dorado, we're expected to um, commence production in around 2026. We're in, we're in late stage engineering now. We'll sanction the project coming this year. And all you can see is this deficit is going to continue through um, through the future. And when we're at first oil, we'll be in a very strong position. And I'll, and I'll explain to you why that's important in a moment. But just, just going into Carnarvon and the Bedat and Dorado, here on, on, on this map here, the, you can see Dorado in green, which signifies it's an oil field. Um, that was our discovery of over 150 million barrels of light, sweet crude oil, highly valuable stuff. Um, and recently we undertook a drilling program and we drilled both the Parvo and the Acres wells. And uh, interestingly, we heard about oil migrating just before. Um, it did indeed migrate out of Apis, so that was not a success, but um, Parvo itself was, was quite sex successful. So um, the way we drill these wells, we drilled Parvo first. We saw an incredible rally in our share price, we got to 42 cents. We raised our capital, went and drilled Apis, we were at about 32 cents at the time. Post APIS, the market completely overreacted. There was a big sell off by speculators, and we're down at 22 cents per share now. I think we closed at 23 cents per share today. So, there in itself probably tells you lies quite a big buy, buying opportunity in Carnarvon. Um, our, in fact, our enterprise value right now is less than it was before we made the Parvo success. And um, in a sec, I'll explain to you why that's quite important. So coming to Dorado, 
This is what Dorado's production profile looks like. Initially, it might look quite disappointing, but this is what all oil fields do. They start producing really hard and then they decline over time and they tend to decline fairly quickly. In saying that, at today's oil prices, the project, the project pays off in year one. That's right, this project pays back in year one. So to take you through the economics, this project is gonna cost just over $2 billion to build. Carnarvon is 20% of that. Santos is the operator and the remaining 80%. We'll build that for 2 billion. Operational costs, a project like these are fairly negligible. It's somewhere in the order of $80 million per annum. This is all in US dollars, by the way. And um, yeah, we, we pay back in year one and it's, and, it's, and it's cream from there. Initial capacity in Dorado is gonna be 100,000 barrels a day. So if you take that, and um, what, it, what it gets you is production in year one is about 30 million barrels. Oil price, $100 a barrel was 110 today. That's $3 billion. So it's actually making $500 million profit in year one. And thereafter, it is, it is all profit from there. So Parvo. Parvo Discovery was about 40 kilometers east of Dorado. And what we, what we do here is we will simply tie that back to the Dorado facility in time. And I'll show you on the next chart what, how that looks against Dorado. But it's a relatively simple development. We put a platform in, a couple of wells, and that, that development there is in the order of $500 million, giving us a capex cost of $10 a barrel. So comparing that back to Dorado, it's $15 a barrel. So we're already getting cheaper as we're starting to step out and find new resources and tie them back to our Dorado facility. The facility already exists. And as you can see on the previous slide, we've got capacity from year two onwards. Then following that, we have another structure called Parvo South, which is another 40 to 50 million barrels of oil of prospective resource. The Parvo discovery was 43 million barrels. So when we add that to the Dorado resource, we, we now have over 200 million barrels of light sweet oil in, in this area. So Parvo South, because the pipeline has been built back to Dorado, we don't have to build another pipeline. We just back it into the same thing. And it's another couple of wells tied right back into the, into the Parvo platform. That's bringing that capital cost down to $5 a barrel. So where we are today at $110 a barrel, we're making 105 profit per barrel. OPEX does not change because it's already coming back to the facility at Dorado that's producing. So it's really just high profit barrels. And this is to demonstrate what it looks like. So back to Dorado, it's paid back in year one. We bring Parvo North in immediately after that. We've already started engineering studies on that, on, on that asset. Um, it's all looking pretty good. So that comes in from year two to three, maintaining that 100,000 barrel per day production rate. So when we think back to the, the simple maths there, 100,000 barrels a day, um, equals 30 million barrels per annum, which equals um, $3 billion of revenue per annum. And we've already sunk all that capital. We don't have to build much more, except in Parvo's case, another $500 million. But at today's rates, pays back in about two months, and it's all profit from them. Basically, this thing is going to pay, generate a lot of income, a lot of revenue. It's going to create so much franking credits, and I can see there's a few people here that seem to be fond of, would be fond of their franking credits and generate a lot of that. Um, you know, do a lot of good things for the Australian community, a bunch of taxes and frankly we'll be paying dividends on this asset. In summing up, um, we went back to, going back to the start, you know, it's an incredibly opportunistic moment to be a Carnarvon shareholder and to be a new shareholder in Carnarvon. What we saw following the drilling of APS1 is there was a complete overreaction. We've had a sell down from 32 cents down to 22 cents. Our enterprise value is lower than it was before we discovered the Parvo resource. And you can see there what the economics has done is gonna to do to that asset there. We're gonna be, we're gonna be generating a gross profit of $100 per barrel in Parvo, and that has not been recognized in our share price. Oil prices are strong. They're, you know, they're $110 per barrel at the moment, and, Places like China still have to get out of COVID. There's going to be con continued demand. There aren't any genuine re replacements for 
the Dorado crew type, particularly in Dorado, there's a very high naphtha cut. Naphtha is used to make plastics and other elements that we use in everyday life. In fact, Teslas are made out of naphtha. So all these electric vehicles that exist, they'll need Dorado crew to make these cars. So Carnarvon, we prioritise oil. Well, while a $2 billion development sounds like a lot, it is paying back in year one, and that's really important. Harvo being so close to Dorado, it just creates such a high cash flow. We can bring it in from year two to year three and extends our returns and returns for shareholders. In that basin, in that basin map where I showed you earlier, um, we've got over a hundred prospects in that area. We've got a, we've only had two wells out of ten here that have not been successful. So over time, we will keep, we'll continue drilling. Um, we're we're in, the, in the midst of formulating our drilling program for next year. Um, we will drill, we will drill Parvo South and sure up those additional 40 to 50 million barrels. And we're hoping to drill some other larger prospects. I think we'll, we'll, we'll chase something over hundred million barrels. Um, so quite substantial. And we, we look forward to sharing more news on the, on the forthcoming drilling campaign shortly. So in summarizing Carnarvon, very valuable stock to hold. It's, it's foundation asset Dorado plus Parvo isn't even accounted for the current share price. Plus, we, as a shareholder, you will enjoy other moments to appreciate share price gains as we do more drilling throughout 2023 and beyond. Thank you. Well done, Thompson. All I heard was a $2 billion outlay for a one-year payback. Uh, quite extraordinary, I must say. He has managed projects across the globe, including onshore and offshore exploration development, production and significant new ventures and transactions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Parks from Providence Energy Sensation. Yeah, my name's Alex Parks. I'm managing director of Providence Energy and the picture there are the two rigs of our active projects. Uh, usual disclaimer. So Prominence Energy seeks to provide PRM shareholders with exposure to high value energy projects that will provide substantial capital growth and the PRM share price in the event of success. Basically, we're chasing 10 backers. And that's what this is. The multi-TCF and Sassanoff exploration prospect um, is, uh, again, on the Northwest Shelf. We added it to the portfolio in December. Uh, we were fully funded by a capital raise uh, that was executed in the first quarter of this year, where we raised 12 million that was heavily oversubscribed. Uh, our share of the well cost is about seven to eight and a half million, so we're fully funded. And the drillings, uh, we announced this morning that equipment has started mobilizing up to Dampier to go on the rig, and the rig will be mobilizing on the 16th of May, and we'll have our drilling result going by about mid June. Early June, if everything goes to the flat. Um, IHS uh, rates Sassanoff as one of the world's 20 most high impact wells to be drilled this year. And that's because it's going to be huge and it's going to extend the Northwest Shelf LNG projects. We have a second project, which I won't really talk about tonight, which is the Bowsprit oil project. We drilled a well there last year. It was an appraisal well. It didn't, uh, the oil has migrated. Um, <laughs> but we can sidetrack that well and put it on production. And it should start production about 1,500 barrels a day, maybe 2,000 barrels a day. And our payback again would be similarly in the order of weeks. Uh, on that sort of rate. So our capital structure, pretty simple, 2.4 billion shares on issue. Uh, we've got listed options, PRMOB, 900 million of those, a few direct to performance rights, and our market cap at, uh, share price of just over one cent is around $30 million. Uh, there's me and the board. Uh, we're all seasoned professionals. Uh, I've been battered by the small oil side, side of the small co small company side of the sector for a very long time. Uh, Troy's uh, formerly Woodside and uh, uh, also the CEO of TAP. And Ian is a, a, very, a, a very experienced corporate director as well. On to the main event, Sassanoff. Uh, it's an amplitude-supported multi-TCF exploration prospect located in the northwest shelf in about a thousand meters of water, 200 kilometers northwest of Onslow. Um, it's big, it's up to 400 square kilometers in area, and it's in a great address. It's surrounded by giant gas fields, 
uh, it sits updated from a mentor, the mentor field, which was drilled and appraised by Hess as part of their 17 well program where they had 15 successful outcomes. Very similar amplitude anomaly, very similar prospect, same formation, looking like it's going to be pretty good. What's interesting, Mentor with two wells in it was proven to be full to spill. So the gas came out of the basin, up to it, filled Mentor, and then has carried on further up to it, and we hope has filled Sassanoff full of uh, gas. The Sassanoff well is pretty straightforward. It's uh, for a deep water well, it's uh, going to be quite cheap at 20 to 25 million dollars. It's going to be a vertical well with a single casing string and will be drilled to a total depth of about 2,500 meters beneath sea level. 1,000 meters of that is water, 1,000 meters of overburdened rock, which is all going to be hopefully pretty, pretty boring and easy to drill. Uh, we're going to set casing at 1,000 meters below the seabed. And then we're drilling the 500 interesting 500 meters of interesting stuff through the reservoir. Regardless of the well result, we, the intention is to fully plug and abandon the well. And if it's got gas in it, we'll run sampling and get uh, all the pressures, etc., that we need to get it properly certified. So as I mentioned earlier, the reef is uh, due to commence mobilization from the port of Dampier on the 16th of May. We'll get out there and we can know the result by early to mid June. If it's there, it's pretty big. You know, it's great. We're chasing up to 17.8 TCF of gas and 450 million barrels of condensate, and the independent auditor ERCE gives us a 32% chance of success. In the event it is a discovery, it can be monetized. This is not going to be stranded gas that's there, sitting there for decades like some of the earlier discoveries. The get, what we're drilling is an amplitude anomaly. And if the amplitude anomaly is related to movable gas, then it's going to be pretty big. We can see it's aerially extensive amplitude anomaly, and that implies that the resource will be at the larger end of the range. A high condensate ratio in Mentor makes uh, that's going to apply the same gas in Sassanoff means that it's dramatically uh, better economics than a pure dry gas field and there's uh, potential to uh, early production, liquid stripping, etc. The other thing about this is it is exceptionally high quality reservoir. The wells here, uh, it's two Darcy's of permeability. These things will flow incredibly uh, if they. If when, when drilled for development. The Northwest Shelf LNG plant is uh, desperately looking for gas, which I publicly stated that they're out there looking for gas. With a higher condensate ratio, our gas should be compatible to extend that, uh, that Northwest Shelf uh, uh, LNG facilities. But that's it. There's other places it could go. Uh, there's potential to put it into Pluto, etc. So that's why Sassanoff is designated by IHS as one of the world's worldwide most high impact wells in 2022. Uh, very briefly, why are we in Louisiana? Uh, it's a historical thing. We drilled a well there uh, last year, and as I said, maybe at the end of the year, we'll come back and put in a production well and tie it back. Our operating costs are a couple of dollars a barrel, uh, and would produce enough cash flow to fund us in drilling another high impact well. So news flow coming up, we, uh, we announced the transaction in December, we had our EGM and approved it, we completed the transaction with Western Gas and our partners who are here tonight, Global. Uh, the rig is commencing mobilization on the 16th of May, it's going to take us about seven days to get it out there and lay the anchors, and we've got seven to ten days of drilling and setting the casing above the re target reservoir. And then the exciting bit in early June when we drill through the reservoir and find out if it's all been worth it. Uh, we're constantly looking for new opportunities and we, we may add things. Uh, contingent plans to drill uh, bow sprit later this year. The picture there is of the Sassanoff, Sassanoff horse, the Melbourne Cup winner of 1916. For those investors who were shrewd enough to back uh, Sassanoff in that race, it paid out at 12 to 1, and for those of you who are shrewd enough to invest in PRM, hopefully you will get a similar sort of return. <laughs> Thank you very much. How do I end the meeting? Stop share first.